Hey there, my name is AJ Pickett and I make videos about role-playing game lore, particularly in-depth monster ecologies. I also have live streams. You can find me on Subscribestar, Patreon and Discord, Facebook and Twitter. Also, there is an option to join the channel as a member and I welcome any questions you have or requests for video topics in the comment section down below. If you enjoy the video, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Have I covered any of the creatures from Cobalt Press's latest monster book, The Tome of Beasts Volume 2? Well, now is a good time to start, I suppose. As this is a brand new creature, the lore for it is kind of a blank canvas for us to fill in ourselves. Also, to make this fun, I had one subscriber pick a random page number in the book, which landed us on a bizarre and horrific monster called the Mad Piper. The description of the beast reads, and I quote, A grey mound of flesh scuttles forward on mismatched limbs, its five heads trilling along on bone flutes, all the while a harrowing tune plays from the column of pipes rising from its core. This thing is technically a living construct, a result of foul, ancient and eldritch ritual magic that warps flesh according to the will of alien powers from the most dreadful reaches of the multiverse. Only when a cult is getting close to unlocking the secrets of how to usher in an age of calamity by summoning an old one are they rewarded with the knowledge of how to create a mad piper. First, they have to locate an ogre, murder it, then harvest its bones and organs to produce a revolting set of bagpipes constructed from its hollowed out bones and its large, tough stomach. Then, five of the cultists must willingly offer themselves up to become the blessed servants of their soon-to-arrive master and at least one of these cultists must be a musician of some kind. When the ritual begins, they stand with their backs to the grisly bagpipes over a strange and disturbing pattern etched into the floor below them, with the musician playing a song on a bone flute that seems to crawl into the ears and scratch at the corners of the mind. As the music plays, the four other humanoids will be drawn towards the music and slowly, horribly, their bodies press into each other more and more until bones begin to snap and the flesh starts to seemingly melt and merge together. All the limbs and heads sink into this throbbing and twitching mass which becomes grey and congeals around this large set of ogre bone pipes protruding out of the top. The strange music continues to play but now it is the large pipes from which the sound comes as the mass heaves in odd places with the five sets of lungs or whatever they've now become pumping air in and out of them still. After a while, the five heads re-emerge, along with randomly assigned limbs, and each of the heads pulls a bone flute from the mass, raises it to its blank and twisted face, and begins to play along to the sound of the large pipes, connected to all of their lungs, and perhaps to something far, far more terrible, to play a haunting tune. The heads are no longer individuals, they share one mind and one body, completely dedicated to their coming master and fondly cared for by their ecstatic fellow cultists now wildly celebrating the impending doom of their world. The Tome of Beasts tells us that mad pipers aren't naturally evil. Most are made from commoners, resulting in relatively docile and loyal creatures that imprint quickly onto cult members, who in turn come to treat these abominations as pets. Mascots, uh, more violent and powerful mad pipers, can be made from powerful evil humanoids, though they are much harder to control and often hostile to their creators as well. It's thought that this ritual is a lesser version of one that creates heralds to an old one called the Crawling Chaos. I profess I don't know much about that dark power, and I don't want to know, and perhaps neither should you, but there are countless elder gods and foul powers older than reckoning that these cults are always trying to dredge out of whatever nightmare prison or lost void in the beyond that they've been dwelling in for eons. My theory as to why these cults are so common, or should I say why ordinary people seem to keep falling into this sort of doom, is that on worlds where magic and divine power are so clearly real, but there are only few individuals who have the ability to access it or master it, those who do not have that dedication, talent or calling to access that power will not just give up trying to get into an arcane academy or join a clerical order or whatever. They'll look elsewhere for that power. And there is a lurking and lost abundance of horrid and evil entities who are only too willing to offer them that sort of power, but with the highest and most terrible prices. Cultists of such old ones as the Crawling Chaos may be blessed with additional limbs, strange sensory organs, psychic powers and the dark gifts of the Warlock, or may have offspring infused with sorcery but also twisted bodies and minds. 
Once they taste some power and true dark gifts, there's usually little anyone can do to stop them from their path to ruin. And inevitably, they do things like perform the ritual of the Herald, creating the Mad Pipers. As a form of living construct so mutated and alien from what they once were, Mad Pipers are now immune to being charmed, exhausted, frightened, poisoned, knocked prone or paralysed. Their many eyes have the ability to see in the dark out to 60 feet while their ability to speak has been lost. They retain the ability to understand the common tongue and the whisperings of the dark old ones. Thanks to their supernatural music, they have the ability to play a tune that inspires the loyal cultists and their allies. As a bonus action, the Mad Piper can play a tune that inspires a friendly creature it can see within 30 feet of it. If the creature can hear the Mad Piper, it has advantage on its next ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. They can also have the opposite effect, playing a terrible dirge that affects any creature of the Mad Piper's choice within 30 feet of itself. Each selected creature that is within that 30 feet and can hear will have to make a DC 13 wisdom saving throw or become frightened for one minute. Frightened characters have a disadvantage on all ability checks and attacks while the Mad Piper is within sight and hearing of them, and they can't willingly bring themselves to move any closer to the Mad Piper unless they manage to beat that saving throw, at which point they are then immune to the creature's song for the next 24 hours. The characters can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of their turns, ending the effect on itself on a success. While the Mad Pipers are large, they are feeble really, and they have an armor class of only 12, and from 9 to 30 hit points with an average of only 19. So these are what you would call one-hit wonders, and you want to keep them safely away, distant from harm, while they play their eldritch tunes. They will almost never be encountered alone and outside of their lair, or some sort of cult. They will scuttle around with their many feet, huffing, tooting, and playing that unnerving music while they seek to influence from cover. If they are engaged in melee combat, the Mad Pipers are poor fighters, very slow to adapt new tactics or coordinate their own effects with their allies. Within melee range, they will lash out with their many limbs all at once while bellowing from a large bone pipes coming out of the body mass. This attack is plus 5 to hit one target in an adjacent position, doing 2d6 plus 3 bludgeoning damage and an additional 1d4 thunder damage. This also serves as a very loud alarm signal to any cultists or mutant flesh constructs nearby, and they'll generally lash out and try and run away. The Mad Piper is a challenge rating 2 monster, best used as something that is more hinted at than fully revealed. Keep your players making those wild guesses as to what is really going on and what it is that's making those noises and how best to handle it. Keep the players distracted with other threats and monsters, which the Mad Piper can boost with its song as it conceals itself behind them, and certainly do your very best to keep that Mad Piper out of a clear line of attack from ranged spells or missile weapons. If you like this sort of quick look into new monsters from third-party publishers like Cobalt Press, hit that like button and let me know if or what I should cover next in the comment section down below. Also, have you used cultists, their hidden lairs and the strange creatures associated with them in your campaigns recently? Let me hear about it, or how it worked or didn't work in the comments. Let's come together as a little community and help each other out with fiendish ideas and clever tips and tricks for our games. Coming up next on my channel, I'm going to be updating my video on the dragon, red dragon ecology from 2015 with all of my new bells and whistles, including all of the questions you've been asking me in the community tab on this channel. As always, thanks for listening, and I'll be back with more for you very soon. Thank you.